Hey YouTube, here is the 95% uh, completed King Hauler day cab build. It's been about a month since I've done a video, and uh, why I say it's 95% is that I don't have lights in it yet. Uh, in fact, I can't reach them from where I'm at. I'll go over the truck. So I used Duplicolor Metal Flake. Yeah, I think it's like a candy red and metallic gray and it's not show quality but it's good enough you see the uh, Shapeways uh, day cab back with the window in it I don't have the interior I have the dash and I have a steering wheel and I don't know if it'll focus but if you can see down in there, there's the sound unit, and there is a little 3S battery in there, too. Actually, I shouldn't say little. I think it's a 1500. But yeah, so there it is. Like I said, I don't have the lights in it. I do have the sound kit. I'm trying to reach something here. I do have a couple cool items. from Brian Almeida at Exclusive RC so you guys know I wanted to do the uh, dual Kenworth headlights and I was going to do the garden trucking ones and Brian said hang on I'm working on and bear with me here I'm trying to get them open and hold the camera it's not going to work So Brian says, well, here, I'm, I'm making some. So unfortunately, I, I wanted this build for the Saturday, July 4th. Uh, I have some friends that were putting on a one-to-one -one truck show because everything else was canceled, which was good. They, uh, I think they had about 20 one-to-one -one trucks show up anywhere from like 1950s to uh, probably around the 90s. And... 15 to 20 antique tractors so I didn't get these in time but if I'll focus on them they are really nice light buckets I, I can't get this to focus but I wanted them for the show because I'm gonna have to do a little body work to get them in there but I think I can just use a sanding drum on the Dremel and not have to repaint anything hopefully so there's that and then he was working on something else that's kind of cool and here again if I can get these open with my teeth I'm probably really not supposed to showcase these yet because I didn't finish them so he came up with his own version of the uh, electrical and airlines and why I kind of wasn't supposed to share them yet I haven't painted the ends and these would be the ends that see like with the screw I think he's just you're gonna screw them probably to the cab I've looked at several real trucks you know they usually come out about here or maybe put a plate here like so to attach those and then this end attaches to the trailer. So if I can try to show you one. They actually work real. He put magnets in them. If you can see the magnet. And there's a magnet in that side. So they actually work like the real trucks. Snap them together. Oops, I did that wrong, didn't I? Snap it together and then turn it and they lock like that and then this end of course can go on your trailer so I just need to detail paint those to get that done so that'll look really good and before I move on to what you're seeing in the background I just real quick recap the uh, July 4th show 
So my son got a truck too, and I, I don't believe I showed this. Uh, Rex Bryson from Indiana sold this truck to my son. It's a grand hauler. I got, oh, and so to go along with that, we got two stock brooder trailers. So there's one. And here's the other one. I just painted them black and then I, I put uh, like the rubber bed liner coating on top of them. That's my uh, Bruder converted 963 that Rex Bryson also did. And then my Huna 580, which I had some trouble down at the truck show. I don't know, the, the, the transmitter and the receiver weren't binding properly and kind of give me some fits. But, well, anyways, the D5 that I converted... And then the Huna wheel loader, which I got two days before that show. And the only thing I did to this was made this arm longer so the bucket doesn't tilt back too far, but will dump far. And I do have the modified steering servo coming, the faster steering servo. Other than that, that thing. And when I do that, I'm going to paint this and detail it. So that's going to be another project. I did get the Lieber 580 decals for it. Uh, and the little... Uh, the little forklift that Rex Bryson converted also. So that was our, our showing for the show, which was very good. So we had all of that. There were a couple other guys. They probably had four trucks with them. Uh, two dump beds, a bottom dump, I believe, another Huna 580, another Cat D5. I think that's just about it. But it was a good show. So I'm going to pause here for a minute and uh, put the camera on the tripod, and then we're going to talk about what's in the background. Stay tuned. Okay, so what I did here, I'm taking the stock Tamiya flatbed semi-trailer, and it is stock too, right down to uh, it has the brass bushings in it. So I build it stock. Well, you can see here the, the stock bottom plate I'm not using that for the bottom of my dump. And the reason being, it just has too many holes all over in it. And I needed something to keep that bolted in place and this mechanism back here. And I'll show you when I flip it over. So I cut it right behind here. That way it can be like a top deck. And you can see the Octronics linear actuator. And let me get the package here. This one happens to be the uh, P16 microlinear actuator. And I, th I think I have the spec sheet on these laying around here somewhere. Let me grab that so I can explain this a little bit. So the P16, if you can see how... The actuators up there in the gearbox is, well, actually, this is the motor. So this has a gearbox in it. So this is their, uh, like, self-contained, yeah, what else does it say? Something about, uh, a large stainless steel bearings, planetary gearbox, stainless steel lead screw, glass reinforced nylon housing. So that's their most powerful ones. This one happens to be the 150 millimeter stroke. And I got the 256 to 1 gear ratio, which maximum force lifted is 300 newtons. And if I did the conversion right, that comes out to 67 pounds. And we're going to test that at some point. So you can see how I mounted it. I made some aluminum brackets in here that actually bolt to the trailer jack and bolt. I mean, it's a solid unit. It isn't going anywhere. And then you can kind of see up underneath. I'll show you what I have going on. So what I did to test this, so now we have it hooked back up. I'm going to back this tripod up and set this down try 
see if I can get this all in here. So what I did was just took one of the angle irons that should be for the trailer, just, just one of these angles, so that I can get my positioning figured out for the actuator. A, a real simple pivot point at the back, figuring that's about where I want to put the dump bed pivot point. And I guess I should come back up here and show you what I did with the electrics. So the P-series, if you get the S, this is what it will come with. Not not the JST connector, but it just comes with a two-pin, uh, like a servo connector, kind of. So you only have a positive and a negative. So you can run these with a speed controller. I happen to be using the Hobby Wing Quick Run 1060 brush speed controller. I think they were like 20 bucks. And you have to make sure you get one that will only go forward and reverse. Can't have the brake function. If I get this to focus. Oh, and these actuators are 12 volts, so I'm running it on a 3S pack. All of that's going to go up underneath this, and I might even make some covers. I'll probably uh, uh, sticky tape the receiver and the speed controller, and then Velcro the battery, and maybe put some con compartments. But you can see why I did this. The dump trailer will cover this when it comes down. And I just got another fly sky. Now I didn't, I bound this on a new model on the radio, but I'm going to go back and put it on the same as the truck, obviously, because I only have the one thing plugged into it. And once we get the lights, it'll have trailer lights. So that's how this actuator runs. And it's, it's totally self-contained and it actually has limit switches at, at both ends of it. So you can't, run it too far either way it will stop so I'll show you how this works if I get this set back down right close I'll turn my radio on turn the speed controller on now, right now, I and I played with it a little bit. I think I might put it on the three-position switch. But right now, I just have it on the stick because if I do it with the truck, obviously that would be my steering. I don't use anything up here, although I, well, right now I do use it for my horn. But So, now bear with me here because I only have one mounting point in the back. And I need to modify this. So I'm going to help it move out of the way just so it doesn't hit okay so see how I have slop there obviously but as all I'm doing is seeing you know I wanted to see the speed of it and and the noise and I wanted to make sure that the 150 millimeter was going to be long enough and I would think even right there, everything would dump out of it, you know, being a dump trailer, but I'm going to let it go till it stops. So you see it stopped. It killed, it hit the limit switch, so it killed the power. So now we can just come back down. And I think I did, I did video this from start going up. And then coming back down, I think it's like a minute. I was kind of concerned being the 256 to 1, it's the slowest. But I don't think that that's too unrealistic of a speed there. I'd rather have it that slow than way too fast and uncontrollable. So, it's going to work. I just need to build the dump trailer next. And I kind of, I can actually get this to bend. So... If I get it to lift, okay, now that that screw missed. So, I mean, I'm, I could bend this angle iron if I really wanted to, and it still wants to lift. So I'm, I don't want to break anything. So I think the actuator is going to be strong enough. 
My other option was, if not, I'd get another one and mount them on the outside and run two of them if I had to. But I don't think that's going to be the case. So that's going to be probably more than one more video. I, I think I have, and actually I think you can see, I did bend that metal, that aluminum. Um, I'm, I'm working on getting a material list to get the aluminum to build the box. So there might be a couple of videos on that, but I just wanted to get, you know, there, there's the, the day cab. It's 95% complete. And obviously this is going to be my cheaper route. Uh, you know, Reg Clark, RCP Hobbies. I, I mean, the man is phenomenal. I actually talked to him, chatted with him, you know, me messages. He's helping me a little bit. I mean, the guy, you know, he knows I'm not building these things for money. I'm not building them for anybody else. I just want to build my own. He has played with these actuators before, too. He came up with a different way on his uh, uh, to be able to screw control them. I, I can't go that route right now, and I can't afford his trailers yet. So I'm going to see what I can come up with myself. And I think it'll be a fun build. So you know, until I do the next video, uh, you guys stay safe, and we'll talk to you later.